Hello, Tom Levecchia here with a very special edition of the New Theory Podcast. Today we have a good one. We're going to find out how to get rich sports gambling. Uh, we got a very special guest today, David Boydoin, a.k.a. Professor, Professor MJ, who at the age of 43, God bless, retired. Um, he's got a PhD in statistics and made over a million dollars cracking the code on how to utilize stats uh, for NHL, uh, MLB, NBA, and the like. David, welcome to the New Theory Podcast. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Okay, so this is an interesting topic to our a lot of our viewers and, and listeners is sports gambling. Um, we're in the you know early on in the NFL um, season, which is a big gambling season. Um, my first question to you is. Do you gamble on the people or do you gamble on the spread looking at the handicap and trying to find gaps or do you really analyze the players matchups and that kind of stuff? Let's start off with that. It's a mix of uh, numbers and also my own analysis of the game. Like you said, the matchups, uh, the injuries or stuff like that. So even though I'm a statistician, I don't believe that looking at numbers only is the way to go you really need a mix of both knowledge about the sport and numbers as well okay so give us your you know obviously you don't give us your algorithm and your secret sauce or if you'd like to we, we take it but give us your methodology so give us an example of a big game that you picked um what was your thought process and give us maybe example of a big win and maybe if you have one a big loss uh well a big win was in when i started my youtube channel that was in 2019 i had been thinking about it for a while and then at the time i was really really confident about the buffalo bills finally breaking out after 18 years of misery so i felt like their uh, season win total was low with six and a half wins and i wanted to place a big bet so i set myself i wanted to bet ten thousand dollars Oh, wow. But doing it online is quite difficult. So I figured, well, I could drive to New Jersey because I saw that the best line available was with FanDuel. Yeah. So I figured, well, I could start my YouTube channel by explaining all of my arguments and then showing my trip to New Jersey, placing that big bet. So that was really one of my biggest gains because they started the season seven and three. So this was quite an easy winner. Uh, it was a relief as well. So it was my first video. So I really wanted them to win the bet, of course. I love it. Okay, so you just brought up a very good point. Because um, I understand FanDuel, DraftKings, and now the score, they now have their own lines. Where before, if you if you have an app and you get a license, you don't create your own odds. You, you outsource it to this one big company. I forget the name. If you know it, please share. Um, my question to you is not all odds are the same. Should you go odds shopping as a practice? Oh, yeah. That's a requirement if you want to be a successful sports better. Whenever someone tells me he plays with just one sport book, I'm like, your chances of being a winner in the long run are slim to none. You need to have an account with at least, at least three sports books, ideally between five and ten. Interesting. Okay. So let's make some money. Um, let's first, again, let's go through your methodology, right? Do you offer a service? Do you teach us how to do it? Let's start off with that. Uh, well, I just released recently a NFL betting course to see how people enjoy it. And so I, I'm looking forward to get some feedback about this. And uh, yes, I'm offering a service where, well, basically I offer free picks, maybe between five to 10 per week on my YouTube channel, Professor MJ. And if people want to know all the bets that I am personally making, which is between 25 and 40 per week, then they need to pay for a membership at uh, mjpicks.com. Okay, so let's just check this out real quick. <clears throat> So this is your YouTube channel, Professor MJ. I just subscribed. You got a decent amount, uh, 26,000 followers. You post your picks daily. So you give kind of some picks to show a little leg, I guess. And then if you want to join the premium service, 
I'm guessing I can go over here, right? ProfessorMJ.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, or and no, on the left, uh, get all picks, mjpicks.com. Okay, perfect. Okay, and I'll, I'll yeah. put the links below. So, okay, so in your in your stats or your model, etc., how much do you rely on AI and artificial intelligence? Yeah, well, right now I don't uh, at all. Oh, so wow, based okay. on statistics models that I've learned uh, when I studied statistics for nine years and then I taught statistics for 15 years. So I developed some mathematical models that I've refined over the years. And like I said earlier, so it's a mix of that and also my analysis of the game or, you know, for example, in the NFL, I love the NFL. I watch pretty much all games. So, so it's really a mix of both of them to help me come up with my final picks. Okay. What has been, can you share, what has been your results? Are you at 57%? What's your percentage win rate over a certain period that you're willing to share? What results have you gotten? Um, if I, let me do the math. So if you want to be, if you want to make a profit, betting the spread at minus 110 10 odds, which are the typical odds, you need to win 52.4% of your bets. Oh, okay. And... And during the six seasons that I've posted my picks online, we've been above that threshold every year, but it's not like 65%. If you know someone who claims he can pick winners, that's not the that's spread not. in the NFL at 65%, yeah. that's impossible. Exactly. So it's, yeah, I, yeah. I would say maybe between 54, 56%. Okay. Which, by the way, there's like, I've read that 5% of sports better make money in the long run. Yeah. So some people are like, well, fifty-four percent. That's not that great over six years. Well, no, no, it's very it is no, no. great. It is hard. It's excellent. It's excellent. So we got a lot of. Uh, I like to think people that do gamble that watch the channel are a little smarter and know that if you do fifty-four to fifty-six percent, you know, over three years, let's say six years, um, that's admirable. Okay, so let's talk about. Let's start. You know, I'm watching. This guy seems like a smart guy. I want to check him out. Give us bankroll management, right? So obviously people set up their bankroll. Let's say I'm willing to put five thousand dollars aside for you, but and for the long run, not just for a C, you know, I want to I want to be profitable yeah. in the long run. Um, how many bets should I make each week for let's say NFL? And then how much units per each bet at five thousand uh, dollars? yeah, I often get asked how much should I bet? So in your example, let's say you have a five thousand dollar bankroll. Yeah. I always recommend people to bet two percent of their bankroll per okay. play on so average. A hundred so in bucks. your case, that would be hundred bucks. Yeah. Okay. So I tend to vary between one and four percent depending on my confidence level. But I don't recommend ever, ever betting more than four percent. I know sometimes you get overly excited about one bet you're like they are going to win for sure no, no don't do it those are the bets that you will often lose most of the time so got it now statistically because i think the holdback for sports books is like six or seven percent you know over the long run but they are very highly profitable bets you know parlays prop bets and the in-game bets and the like from a statistical standpoint Statistically speaking, in the long run, what if you're looking to be a serious better, what bets are an absolute scam statistically? To what type of bets? Parlay bets. Parlay bets, okay. I've, yeah, I've made one video about this showing how bad these bets are. And most sports books promote their parlays, and there's a reason for that because they make a lot of money off parlay bets. You to me, you should avoid parlay bets. Uh, all the time. I do it only when I have an account where my bankroll has grown substantially and I want to look like I'm a loser who just got lucky. Then I'm going to place a few parlay bets so that the manager is like, ah, he's just lucky. He's going to win. He's going to lose uh, at some point. So that's the only been, exception. Have you been banned from anywhere yet? Yes. Yeah. Or, well, most of the time they will limit you instead of banning you. So there are a couple of sports books where, like, my betting limit is $1.43. So <laughs> who wants to bet $1 per play? So 
they were basically telling me to go and that's what i you know what's I did. funny though you know what's funny though uh <laughs> professor mj is uh is they'll gladly take your money but when you start winning they say whoa, 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 whoa. you know we uh yeah we can- exactly and they don't want to tell you that they're banned they don't want to ban you so they're just going to limit you so that you leave by yourself i love it okay now smart guys okay now what bet statistically is closest to a coin flip over under you know give us like let's just say i want to gamble but i want to go the co- closest to a coin flip because i don't really understand all these guys running around in the field give us a coast cl- cl- the closest bet to a coin flip you mean the bet type or a specific sport the bet, or the bet type bet type let's say i want to stick with nfl and football is it over under give us the best bet type that's closest to 50 percent yeah probably a point spreads and totals in the nfl <clears throat> What I prefer in the NFL, it's quite hard to beat spreads and total. So I tend to put more attention on the player prop bets. And if you have an account with a sports book, you know that your betting limit is much, much smaller on prop bet. And again, there's a reason for it because they know they are more easily beatable. Their lines are not as accurate. So and also their vigorish is higher they tend to put lines that are minus 115 or minus 120 yeah. instead of minus 110 and again because it's they they know those lines are not as accurate so that's where i put my focus on uh, most of the time got it are the lines the same let's say i'm with mgm or caesar which, whichever are the lines the same in person in atlantic city as they are online or do they vary a little bit too I believe they're the same. Of course, they are They are in the U.S., so I don't go there very often. But, for example, my big bet on the Bills in 2019, the best line was with FanDuel, so I drove to MetLife, and the line was the same as uh, online, thank God, after driving for so many hours. So, yeah, they are the same in person and online, as far as I know. Okay. So what about... Um arbitrage uh odds arbitrage uh what how do how do you look out for one do you go in your fan duel draft kings the score barstool like do you like what's the best way to pick up an arbitrage and what type of spread do you need in order to really pounce on it yeah it requires quite a bit of time to be line shopping so yeah i did this full time for three or four years uh, starting in 1999 at the time, the lines were very different from one sport book to the other. So it was very lucrative. These days, it's harder and you need to look at maybe player prop bets or more obscure leagues. You're not going to find many arbitrage opportunities like on NFL spreads or NBA. Or, yeah, or if you find one, it's going to be available for five seconds. So you better be quick. So, how, so you were doing this full time, just full time gambler? Yeah, from 1999 to 2003. Yeah, so I was a student at the time, but all of my free time was devoted to this. So instead of partying like everybody else, I was the nerd who was going on his computer and making money uh, with online sports book, looking for arbitrage opportunities uh, every day. Okay, so I want to be cynical, the cynical viewer listener for a second. A lot of these gurus and a lot of these people that are out there, um, uh, you know, if you have the secret sauce, why share it? I'll just go bet my money, make my money, and run off to the hills. Why, you know, why do you share it for people, whether free or paid, if it's that, if it's that, if it's that um, lucrative? Because I, I really want to help people to start making money online. I prefer people to beat sports book than rather than the other way around. Yeah. And at first, I did not even want to share my picks, but I kept receiving emails or could i pay to get your picks i was like ah, i don't want to share them i just want to give some free picks but eventually i changed my mind and i was like yeah well let's do it but the goal is i'm really thrilled when i get an email from someone who says well thank you so much i'm finally making some money or or if i could help people to lose less money that would even be a, a gain to me like stopping to make parlay bets that would be a good start to me now there are a lot of services out there and unfortunately a lot of them are unscrupulous 
when somebody calls a service or they go online for a service, what are some red flags to look out for to maybe not getting hooked up with a, with a sketchy vendor? Well, if the advertised winning percentages are too high, that's a red flag. Or if it's hard to check past picks from this person, for example, in my case, my YouTube, my YouTube channel oh, has yeah, yeah. lots and lots of videos. So it, they are all documented on YouTube or my website or, you know, I, there's no way I could cheat people. The, all of my picks are readily available. So you need to look for someone whose winning percentage is not too high and over many seasons and where you can verify uh, at least for a few years. All right. I'm looking at your site right now, MJ Picks. Um, looks like you have different programs. One uh, per week is uh, 3 bucks a day or 21 per week. Two per week is uh, 28 and uh all sports weekly 35 so they are fair prices quick to sign up Twenty thousand members 30 countries so I, I i like what you're doing um before we conclude i hate to do this to you, professor gonna need some picks for the week uh we gotta gotta make some money before we sign up what do you got for us uh well the first pick i liked for week four in the nfl as soon as the lines were released I could not believe the Patriots were seven-point underdogs in Dallas. I mean, did they watch the Cowboys cards game last week or what? Yeah. So I think the line has dropped to six and a half, perhaps even six right now. But at the time I shared the pick, like Monday, they were seven-point underdogs. And I really love this pick. It's going to be hard for the Cowboys to beat them by eight or more. I mean, the Patriots only allowed 24 points to the Dolphins, yeah, only defense. 25 to uh, the Eagles. So their defense is really stout. What? Uh, so the line was seven. You, you caught it at seven or predicted at seven. What's it at now? Six and a half? Yeah, I think it's six and a half, maybe six with some sports books. Uh, I, I think it's hard to get seven points right now. So let me ask you. Um, and again, this I don't know if this is factored into your equation and stats. Do you recommend buying a half point or buying a point, or does that skew the odds too much? Sometimes I do recommend it, yeah, in the, especially in the NFL where the lines are quite accurate. So half a point in the NFL is worth quite a bit. So yes, in some cases, I recommend buying half a point. It could be worth it, yeah. Okay, so, so Patriots... If you can get seven, take it. Six and a half, buy half a point if you can against Dallas on the road. Is that your pick, Professor? Yeah, that would be my top pick. My second best would be the Steelers on the road at the Texans. I know CJ Stroud has been quite good so far. He's averaged more than 300 passing yards per game. But it's going to be more difficult against the Steelers pass rush. Also, I feel like Pittsburgh's offense finally showed some signs of life in the second half against the Raiders. Yeah. So uh, I like the Steelers here to beat the two and a half point spread. So they are they are uh, Steelers uh, uh, giving two and a half. They are, yeah, they are favorites. But isn't isn't favorites. there? I know, like you know, I'm just kind of giving the old wives' tale, right? In the NFL, if a home team gets the points, take it, or is that just statistical hogwash? Oh, well, it depends. Uh, either It's not as simple as that. You can't say, uh, I'm going to pick all home underdogs all the time in the NFL. I'm sure you probably lose money if you did that for 10 years. I like it. So Patriots, uh, try to get seven, if not six and a half by the half. Steelers, give up the two and a half on the road. Uh, pick it, I think, is going to emerge. Uh, it'll be interesting because it's weird. Although, like, Houston is a bad team. They're like a good bad team. They show like moments of like strength and then, then, they, then they lose. Um, all right. How can we find you, MJ? We're going to uh, uh, put your link below. But for those on audio, there'll still be a link. Uh, but how can people find you, MJ? All right. Thank you very much. And have a great weekend. But I'm saying, how? what's the best way to find you? MJPicks.com or social media? What's the best way to find you? 
my YouTube channel is where I post the most often. I usually post one video per day on weekday, so from Monday to Friday, and plus one NFL video, or you can go at mjfix.com or professormj.com. Love it. Thanks so much for being on the podcast. I'm going to follow up with you soon, and we'll see how this picks go. Thanks so much, Professor. All right. Thank you.